And this could possibly, hopefully, be the last time that I ever talk about Tattoo Gate in this capacity. Why am I here again? Why? Why? Hello, my darlings. I hope you're all doing very, very well. I'm so sorry that I'm here again talking about Tattoo Gate, like 10 months on from when it actually happened. Oh God, can you believe we're here? Like I literally, how long ago was it? Just over a month ago, maybe two months ago, I was like, right, Tattoo Gate is done. We're over it. We're finished. No more. And um, yeah, we're not done apparently. We're not, we're not done. We're not done. Are we ever going to be done? I don't know. I'm not ever going to make promises that we're done and we're over it because we're never going to be done. I feel like this is going to be like a five year saga at this point. So strap yourselves in. So we do have an update to everything that is going on with Tattoo Gate. Let's just do the quickest recap I can possibly do. Okay. Back in May last year, a lovely lady by the name of Courtney uploaded a TikTok discussing an issue she had been having with her tattoo artist. The tattoo artist's name is Lindsay Joseph. Courtney paid a lot of money for a design fee, a consultation fee, and the tattoo artist Lindsay was saying, you know, if she wants to change the design, she would have to pay more money. It was all very, very scammy. Courtney documented all of this in a TikTok, and then she had an outpouring amount of support from fellow tattoo enthusiasts, tattoo artists, and people that don't even care about tattoos. Like this whole situation went viral. Tattoo artists were offering to do the tattoo for her for free. She eventually got the tattoo that she wanted, which was a fox by a tattoo artist of the name Matt Vaught. And then it was a happy ending on that front. During all of this, we find out that Lindsay Joseph, the tattoo artist that was doing the scamming, learned how to do all of the scamming from a once very well-respected tattoo artist by the name of Ross Abbott. He has this tattoo business called Launchpad where he helps tattoo artists excel in their businesses whether they are self-employed or they own their own tattoo studio and he kind of helps tattoo artists you know make a bit more money and just get the best out of their business and all of that right okay it honestly sounds very pyramid schemey but whatever then we come to find out that Lindsay Joseph is taking legal action against Christine and another person that spoke up about their experience by the name of Re. This video is going to be based on Re, so we'll get more into that in a minute. What else happened? And then I had someone called Teresa reach out to me who had experience with Lindsay Joseph as well. And she spoke out about her experience and the fact that Lindsay was charging a lot of money, was pretty half assed throughout the tattoo appointments. Teresa actually booked her appointments before Tattoo Gate and said before Tattoo Gate, Lindsay was really nice and she kind of just changed you know, going through all of this or what have you. And then a couple of months ago, Lindsay Joseph decided that, you know, she wants to shut down her business. It's all been too much. And, you know, she wants to end it all and kind of subtly blame this whole tattoo gate on this experience. Lindsay still to this day has not said one word about tattoo gate. She's never apologized, never come forward and said, you know what? Yeah, I fucked up. Or yeah, I charge far too much for my tattoos. And oh my Lord, it's been a whole hot mess. So let's get on to the newer stuff. So as you may know, last month in February, I went to Canada. I had literally touched down, landed in Canada. I had got to my condo apartment that we rented for the week. And, um, I look at my Instagram messages, you know, finally got some Wi-Fi, and I had a message from Courtney's sister. If you remember back, Courtney is the fox tattoo lady, and I had spoken to her sister a couple of times. She literally messaged me saying, fire up your camera. Re is being sued for a lot of money from Lindsay Joseph for talking about her experience with Lindsay, because Re uploaded a TikTok saying, you know, this is what I've been through with Lindsay. This is what happened with the whole thing, and um, she's being sued for that for telling the truth. So we knew there was rumblings of a lawsuit happening, but it's all now coming into fruition. We're finding out more information. So Re recently uploaded a couple of TikToks about this whole situation. She says that she hasn't been able to say much because she's got legal advice not to. Tattoo gate update. 
I know a lot of you have been asking for an update over the last few months. Um, I haven't really been able to say much on the situation, just at the advice of my lawyers. So we then find out that, of course, the lawsuit is still happening. I had a theory that it might have been dropped because we didn't really have any information about it. Obviously, we're not owed any information or anything like that. But I felt like because Lindsay had shut down her studio, that maybe she was just moving on from the whole thing, right? But no, the, the lawsuit is still happening. But I do have a pretty juicy update for you guys today. Um, Lindsay Joseph is officially suing me for defamation for over $2 million. $2 million for defamation. $2 million for defamation for telling the truth or for telling her side of the story of what happened. So for those that don't remember, Re had a payment issue with Lindsay. She was told a certain amount of money. And then when it comes to the tattoo appointment, she was told more and she was like, no, I'm not paying that. Lindsay basically took a picture of her driving license and then she spread it everywhere within the area and further to say, you know, Re hasn't paid, she skipped out and all of that and the police were involved and it was a whole hot mess. So obviously Re can counter sue because, you know, Lindsay was out here spreading her personal information when she had absolutely no right to. She basically doxed Re, which is obviously horrific and no one should have to go through that. But yeah, two million dollars for defamation. I just, I mean, who has two million dollars? I don't obviously know Ree's financial situation, but I'm gonna say, you know, like she's the average person, you know? I don't think she has two million dollars. Like it's insanity. Ree then goes on to say that she will update everyone when it's possible. So that's fun. Um, thank you all for your continued support. I will try to keep you updated here on TikTok, but just keep in mind it's probably going to be pretty limited uh, just because of the legalities and, and, and everything. So again, thank you all and um, yeah, I guess wish me good luck. <laughs> so there's a few comments obviously on this post of people being like, what the hell is going on? And, and people showing support. I commented on it as soon as I found out about it. And I literally said the audacity, I'm actually shocked. I'm so sorry it's gone this far for you. And then Teresa commented, who also has had an experience with Lindsay. She said, we are all with you. So many people have had similar experiences with her. You aren't alone. And then this comment says, her posting your driver's license was setting you and your family up for harm or doxing, counter sue, which is, yeah it's not really defamation if it's true though which is true good god trying to sue for two million she really is just money hungry she just proved anyone not wanting a tattoo with her because of her greed right wow suing you for two million dollars isn't that the cost for one of her tattoos <laughs> no but for real like she charges like 10 grand for a sleeve at this point it's insane and like i've said throughout this whole series Lindsay isn't a bad tattoo artist, but she's not on the level to be charging what she charges. How can we support you from here? And then Rhys said, thank you for asking. I have to wait until my lawyer gives me the go ahead to post anything else, but I promise I'll update soon. And of course, should there ever be like a GoFundMe or any kind of way that we can support Rhys, I will, you know, tell you about it because I feel like, I feel like we're all a part of this, if that makes sense. Obviously, we're not the ones going through the lawsuit, but, you know, from all of this investment in this whole story and, you know, trying to get justice for those that have been through this whole thing and lost out so much money and even more money now that there is lawsuits. Yeah, I feel like we need to all give love and support to those involved, obviously. And then this one says, oh my gosh, you poor thing, good luck. You told no lies, judge will see that, don't be stressed. And then someone else said, how utterly ridiculous, which is so true. Then in another TikTok, Re asks if anyone else has had any experience with Lindsay Joseph. Hey, this message is for anyone who has had a negative uh, experience or interaction with Lindsay Joseph. If you could please try and reach out to me to share your experience, either via this platform or another platform, uh, just for the future, I would just like to make those connections. 
every little bit helps and uh, thank you so much. Have a great day. I'd imagine obviously that this is to help build a case against Lindsay Joseph. The more people that speak out against Lindsay and have evidence of her behavior, emails, receipts, timelines, proof. <laughs> it will obviously be super helpful for Re in the future when it comes to her law case. So should you watching this ever had any experience with Lindsay and you want to help build a case against her, then do reach out to Re. I'll of course leave all of her social media information down below. But yeah, the stronger the case, the more chance Re has of fighting this and avoiding paying two million dollars for speaking her truth against this situation. And the thing is, I don't think Courtney or Re even imagined that it would get this far. You know, like before this happened, the views that Courtney and Re got on their TikToks weren't that high. It just happened to just all of a sudden blow up. I don't think any of them even imagined that this would go as far as it did. Um, which sucks, obviously, but, like, can't people just, you know, talk about their experiences nowadays? Like, it's crazy. And the thing is, I don't think Courtney or Re ever actually mentioned Lindsay's name. I think just internet detectives found out, you know? Like, that's the way the internet works, but... Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, so Lindsay Joseph announced on the 22nd of January in this um, Instagram post that she will be shutting down her studio because of all of the drama and all of that which okay i kind of get but again you don't have to go this far all she had to do was take some accountability in the whole situation and say yeah this is what happened i charged a lot you know like it could have just all gone away but no 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 lindsay is taking the victim route um by saying you know i haven't had much power in this situation and she'll be tattooing memorial tattoos for free in February and donating any tips to a charity and all of that. Again, taking no accountability. When me and Courtney's sister had a discussion about this whole thing, we kind of had this theory of the fact that the fact that she is now shutting down her studio or shutting down her studio, it looks good for her in court by saying, this whole drama has caused me to shut down my business. I've lost out, you know, I've worked really hard to get this studio and to get a, you know, business going. And obviously like for a judge that looks kind of bad, doesn't it? It's just, but the thing is we can see right through it and hopefully whichever judge comes across this case, you know, if it goes through or whatever, sees right through it as well. But yeah, she did carry on tattooing for a while. These are the kind of hearts that she was doing as a free flash situation, kind of using up her supplies because, you know, she's going to shut down. Um, But like, she's still uploading five days ago. So I'm filming this on the 13th of March and she's still uploading photos of her tattoo work. So this was done, I guess, maybe on the 8th of March, but she said she was only doing it for February. Again, this could have been just taken in February and she's still just uploading, but why would you carry on up uploading tattoos to your business page if you don't wanna tattoo anymore or you're shutting your business? It just doesn't make sense to me, you know? Like, maybe she is still shutting her shop down or whatever but mm, there's something fishy going on here just something a little bit fishy like ugh. you know and it still says artist dm to connect on her profile she isn't saying that she stopped tattooing anywhere you know all of her posts are just basically reviews of the tattoos or why someone is getting the tattoo like this is a memorial piece for someone's grandma is anyone else when you're a bit fishy or is that just me i don't want to be like some conspiracy theorist but i don't know so there's a chance that she's still tattooing or she's still using up her supplies again it is only 13 days past february so we can maybe give her a leeway but if she's still uploading in tattoos in like April, May? Mm, why would you if you're not tattooing anymore? Why would you if you've shut your tattoo studio down? You know? Anyway, I know this has been a lot and you're probably all very burnt out from tattoo gay, but I did say that, you know, I am here to speak about tattoo gay. I made the commitment from day one to deliver the information and here I am. So I'm not gonna sit here and say, I'm never gonna be back here speaking about it again, because obviously there is a law case 
or a lawsuit happening. So obviously there's gonna be updates at some point. Obviously I wish all the best to Re, and hopefully she is getting all the support and help that she needs. And obviously if I can do anything, I'm here in any way I can. <laughs> But yeah, that is pretty much everything up to date thus far. Should there be anything else, I'll of course update you as and when I can. Sorry that I am delayed on this video, because again, this happened like over a month ago. Um, but yeah, I went to Canada and then sadly I went through a lot of health problems. Well, it wasn't like a lot of health problems. It was basically one thing after another. I don't want to bore you with the whole thing, but I'll give you a quick update while I'm here. And I know this video isn't like super long or whatever, so... Um, yeah, I went to Canada and before I went to Canada, I started to struggle with my RCPD again. Um, for those of you that don't know, RCPD is basically a disorder where you have a broken muscle in your throat and you can't burp. And I know that doesn't sound serious to a lot of people. I know there's a lot of people that can't burp and they never have issues with it, but I have struggled with it for the majority of my life. And I've had a couple of treatments for it, which is basically Botox in the throat. And the last Botox I had was um, end of July. And around about November, December time, it started to wear off and I couldn't burp as much. And it's slowly been getting worse and worse and worse. And basically I have symptoms of like extreme bloating, trapped air, cramping, uncomfortableness. It's awful. Drinking and eating is hell for me because I'm taking in more air and I can't get it out. And yeah, I just sadly cannot burp anymore. And while I was in Canada, the like no burping situation was just getting worse and worse and worse. I don't know what was happening there, but yeah, I went from burping a little bit to not at all. And then I come home and it was just even worse. So I've just been dealing with that. And then I had shark weed cramps and then Tom had to be off work because he had an ear infection. You know, just when everything is one after the other, I was having that. So that's where I've been for like a few weeks. Um, But I do have another Botox appointment in May. That was the quickest one I could get. And I booked that in November because I knew it was like coming out of my system and I wasn't burping as much. So luckily I booked it in November for May. That was a, that was the earliest one I could get. So until then I will be in struggle town, but it's fine. It's fine. It's only a couple of months, you know. I'm not gonna bore you anymore, but I thought I'd just give you a quick update as to where I've been. But yeah, anyway, I think we're back on schedule now and um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> so if there's any updates, I'll let you know um, when it comes to Tattoo Gate or whatever. And yeah, until my next video, goodbye.